Hello and welcome back to the channel. You've joined myself, Dr. James Gill, for another clinical skills adjacent video. As you can see, once again, I'm on expedition and bizarrely, I found a video topic that covers out here, but also back at home. So often people come in and they grump that a different doctor and things hasn't given them antibiotics for their sore throat and they ask me for another prescription. And that's always a very difficult discussion because we have to address whether or not antibiotics work or not with a sore throat. And actually the same thing has been happening whilst I'm on expedition. There's been a, a bug doing the rounds with the team out here and I've had lots of people come up directly to ask me for antibiotics. And it takes some time to be able to explain whether or not that patient needs antibiotics or not. So I thought it might be worthwhile explaining the process that we use to go through it and so that you guys can see it's not just us protecting the antibiotics, although we do have a duty of stewardship to them, but it's that we want to make sure that we're actually helping you and not potentially causing side effects from an antibiotic that won't do you any good. So, why won't your doctor give you antibiotics for your sore throat? Well, let's start off with an easy one. As a rule of thumb, and rules of thumb are always slightly tricky, a sore throat, which has caused a change to the voice, is probably a viral issue, not a bacterial issue. Now, it's important we highlight that's a rule of thumb, so we're definitely going to go further in this and give you some tools that give you numbers. But that's something to, first off, put in your head. Now, we say that as a rule of thumb, a sore throat is probably due to a virus. We're talking about that acute sore throat because a sore throat could be due to a virus, which won't respond to antibiotics. It could be due to bacteria where we might need to consider antibiotics, but there are in rare cases other things that could be causing a sore throat. And we still want to make sure that, you know, all patients with a sore throat who are concerned come and have a chat to us because if you've had a sore throat for a long time and you've noticed changes to your voice that might actually be something quite nasty potentially a cancer there so we want to make sure that we're looking at all options but the vast majority of sore throats are going to be viral or bacterial so you come into the GP surgery and you say you've got a sore throat I need to try and determine what type of sore throat it is, i.e. viral or bacterial. But it's not just about giving you antibiotics to make you feel better, because actually they probably won't. All the evidence suggests that when we give antibiotics for a sore throat, even when they're clinically indicated, it probably improves symptoms by about 12 hours. So it's not going to do a huge amount. The other thing with giving antibiotics is it's not necessarily about you now, but maybe you later, but hopefully a later that never arrives. With a bacterial sore throat, we worry about group A streptococcus, which I'm sure lots of people saw in the news last year because there was quite an outbreak in the UK. If we get a group A streptococcus sore throat, that could cause something called rheumatic fever, which at the end game could potentially damage the heart. Bacterial sore throats can also lead to another complication called quinzies, where the tonsil swells full of pus in an abscess and actually can occlude the airway. Now, both of those are very, very rare, it's important to highlight, to the degree that we don't really consider that we have rheumatic fever anymore because we've got easy access to antibiotics. But that's why we give the antibiotics, because we can make sure those complications are pretty much taken away from a patient. So, you come in, you've got a sore throat, you're feeling really rough. How can I try to determine what's going on? And that, that's the crucial word. How can I try? Because none of this is absolute. But we use something called the Centaur criteria, which has five points that help us determine what's going on. Is there a cough? Are there any white spots? Is there any exudate? Do you have any nodes, painful lymph nodes in the body, particularly in the anterior cervical chain? Have you had a temperature? And O for old age, i.e., are you under 15 or over 55? But how do those fit into having antibiotics or not? Well, if you've got a cough, you actually don't score a point. So there's another rule of thumb for you. If your sore throat has a cough, it's more likely to be uh, due to a virus rather than a bacteria. It's not absolute, that's why there's five other points, but definitely something to think about. So if you've got a cough, you don't have a point which often surprises patients. We then want to talk about exudates. If you've got a big, sore, inflamed, angry throat, that is definitely a problem and you are certainly suffering. And there's lots of things from a symptomatic perspective we can do. Paracetamol, if you can take it, ibuprofen, 
if you can have them, the Diflam sprays, the local anaesthetic sprays, and the throat lozenges. But you don't get a point for that. What you do get a point for is the exudate. If you've got nasty, white, creamy stuff sloughing off the tonsils, that's where we've got a bacterial infection. We're seeing the effects of that bacteria on the tonsils. Yes, bacteria could cause that big inflammation as well, but that's more likely due to a virus. If you've got painful lumps and bumps in the neck, that also gets you a point. Now, it's quite possible you could have big lymph nodes in the neck because your body's fighting the virus, but if they're tender when we do that examination, it's more likely that it's a bacteria. The next one, temperature. We're taking the information largely from you. If you as a patient say that you have a temperature at home or have done a short while ago, then you get the point because you may have had paracetamol or ibuprofen recently, which has brought your temperature down. So in the GP clinic or <laughs> by the rocks, when I check your temperature, it might be normal because you've had an antipyretic. So very much we're listening to what you're saying there. And then finally, O for old age, I say our T and sympathy points. You gain a point if your age is under 15 and you gain a point if your age is older than 55 because they're the areas where, again, we're more likely to be dealing with a bacterial infection. But great, you've got a handful of points. How do we analyse those points? How do we use those points to determine if antibiotics are going to be useful for you? So, if you score one, realistically it's under 10% chance that you'll need antibiotics. And that is crucial. I'm not saying it's zero. There is still a possibility that you need antibiotics. But now we really dig into the numbers. We know that about 50% of people will be made worse by the antibiotics and the antibiotics aren't going to have a big impact on the symptoms. As I say, it will only reduce the symptoms by about 12 hours. What it's there for, those antibiotics, is to stop those nasty complications like quinsy and uh, rheumatic fever. So uh, if you've got one, you probably don't need them. Now, if you're absolutely terrified and you want to take the potential for the side effects, I will certainly give you them, but we treat the patient, not the computer. So if you're adamant, then we'll have that discussion and we'll make the, uh, the choice together. If you've got two points, we're moving up a little bit now. There's a 15 to 20% you need antibiotics. So in my opinion, we're still looking on the probability of symptomatic treatment. If we get into three, now we need to start doing things. So if you've got a score of three, I'm going to suggest that we do a throat swab and I'm going to suggest I give you a delayed course of antibiotics. We send it off to the pharmacy or give you it to hold in your hand, but only take it if this swab, which we should be able to do over 24 hours, comes back positive. So we're covering you knowing that the antibiotics aren't to treat the symptoms, they're to prevent a complication, which is more of a long term, which is why we're going to have the full 10 day course of antibiotics. But if it comes back negative, then we don't need to take those. If we've got a score of four, I'm more likely to say, take the antibiotics if the patient in front of me is really ill, but we're still going to do that swab. But rather than send it to the uh, pharmacy, I might give them those antibiotics to say, if you deteriorate as well, start to take those. Because with a score of three, you're probably dealing with a 30 to 40% chance that you need antibiotics. And a score of four is a 40 to 50% chance you need antibiotics. So again, we're getting close to that, the balance of probability. A score of five, now, you have 58% chance of bacterial infection, which is more than our possibility of the antibiotics causing your problems. So I'm going to not give you them, but I'm going to suggest strongly that you do consider taking those medications because it's still about the patient in front of me. And some patients might say, no, they don't want to take them and they'll see how things go. In which case, I'd still probably suggest that they take the delayed course and if they worsen, so if their you know, symptoms become more severe, then definitely take them. But it's all about treating the patient. So I hope there's been a useful overview as to why your GP might not give you antibiotics for your sore throat. It's not because we are saying no, it's because we want to make sure we treat each of you correctly and using the balance of probability. So I hope it's been useful, and I think off the back of this, we're probably going to have to do a video on how to properly examine the throat. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.